Well, we begin with Canadian astronaut David Singh Jacques, who is preparing to take the plunge of a lifetime. He just spent six months aboard the International Space Station. That is 3,264 orbits of Earth. He will return home later today along with two colleagues. He will board a tiny capsule, push off from the station and drop back to Earth. And when he does, he will hold a new Canadian record for the most consecutive days in space, 205. And last night, his crew capped off the mission by handing over station control. That ended with this moment. Congratulations, Alexei, on assuming command of the International Space Station. We also congratulate Increment 59 for excellent work. And we know that Increment 60 will be an incredibly successful mission. This is the end of the formal change of command ceremony. Our Russia correspondent Chris Brown has more from where David St. Jacques will land tonight in Kazakhstan. Well, Canada's longest ever mission in space is just about to come to an end. David St. Jacques in just a few hours will be returning to Earth somewhere here in central Kazakhstan. And while it has absolutely been an epic journey for him up in orbit, it's also been a pretty interesting one for us down here in the ground who've come out to meet David St. Jacques when his uh, landing uh, module touches down. Just have a look around. Uh, we are really in the middle of nowhere here, about 500 kilometers from the closest uh, community of any size in Kazakhstan. Over there, what you're seeing now, we're told is an old uh, cemetery, really is the only sign of of any life here at all. Um, we were sort of part of a military style operation that's going to be unfolding. Over the next few hours, there's going to be very large uh, all-terrain vehicles that are going to be driving in here. They're going to have a, a little hospital almost that they're going to set up uh, so that they'll be able to put the uh, astronauts in the hospital just to, just to check them out to make sure they're, uh, they're all right. There's also going to be uh, an area up here to my right uh, with uh, satellites and so forth, and that's where uh, we'll, all be, uh, we'll all be camping for the night. Uh, St. Jacques is arriving at about 10 to 10 Eastern time. That's 8.30 here in the morning. So everyone, as I say, will camp out and then spring into action tomorrow. The plan will be to remove the astronauts from the capsule, as I say, check them out, make sure they're, they're healthy. They will not stay here for long, really only less than an hour or so before putting uh, the three of them into a helicopter, flying them back to Karaganda, and then off to North America. So a very interesting and important night and morning to come here in central Kazakhstan. Chris Brown, CBC News in Kazakhstan. Joining us now is someone who's been watching David St. Jacques' mission from liftoff to today's touchdown. He is someone who is very familiar to many, of course, the host of Quirks and Quirks on CBC Radio. We're talking about Bob McDonald, who joins us in Toronto today. So, Bob, good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. So another uh, big moment in this mission. Uh, let's talk about David St. Jacques' re-entry into the Earth orbit. What will you be looking out for here? <laughs> the first thing I'm going to look out for is that big parachute to make sure it's open. <laughs> that, that's the first thing. And then uh, how he, uh, that, that'll be a good sign. And then uh, how he's going to look when they carry him out. He will not be able to get out on his own because his body is not used to gravity. He's going to feel weak. He's going to feel dizzy. So they'll be carrying him out. But it's, uh, it's going to be quite a transition after six months of floating around like Peter Pan, being totally weightless, effortless to go in any direction, to suddenly have the force of gravity. His head is going to feel like a cannonball on his shoulders. His arms are going to feel heavy. And his sense of up and down, which has been taken away for the last six months, is going to come back. We have organs in our ears and in, in, around our body that uh, use gravity to tell us where down is. And those are going to turn on for him and they'll be very, very powerful. And any movement that he makes, even just turning his head like that, will give him a really dizzy sensation. So he's, he's going to adapt to the earth. It's going to, he's going to become an earthling again in his it's going to be difficult for him at, at the beginning. Yeah, I can imagine. But of course, also the, the re-entry is going to be difficult as well, because I think people have in their minds when they think of a landing, almost an airplane landing, which is uh, mm -hmm. these days computerized, very, uh, very without incident, if you will, uh, for the most part. But that's not the case here, because this seems like a very rough and tumble ride back to the Earth. 
It is. The uh, Russians haven't changed their their technology in 60 years. They still use a capsule that just falls from space like a meteorite and then a parachute opens. And instead of landing in the ocean like they used to do during the Apollo days, this one lands on land. Uh, they used to have wings. The American space shuttles came down on wings. And that's a very gentle way of coming down, very controlled. So the gravity comes on very slowly and they have a nice little touchdown. In the, in the Soyuz capsule, they hit the atmosphere and really high speed and then suddenly they're, they're slowing down and, and they feel the g-force is building up on building up on them and they up to five times their weight so you go from zero to five times your weight then the parachute opens and there's a jar there when that happens and the capsule swings underneath it sometimes spins around and then they hit the ground uh, just before they hit the ground there are some explosive well they call them retro rockets but they're really explosives that try to make a little bit of a cushion but the thing comes down like and so they're back in their seats like that <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes the parachutes, if there's a wind, it'll pull them off to the side so the thing falls over. So that's what he's going through. I mean, man, it's a real ride. Yeah, if you were flying a commercial airline, you'd be uh, asking for a refund back with that type of I landing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the mission so far, though. What have been the highlights for you as we look at David St. Jacques, what, 205 days in orbit? Well, the big highlight for me was his spacewalk because uh, it takes a lot more training to uh, go outside, to put on a spacesuit. And from the astronaut's perspective, we've had three Canadians do it before David, uh, Chris Hadfield, Dave Williams, and Steve McLean. And all of them talk about the incredible panoramic view that they give, get outside because instead of looking through a window from inside a spaceship, now they got this bubble helmet and they can look in any direction. They have the whole Earth out before them or they can turn their back and look out into the depths of the universe. Uh, they're working in zero gravity. They've got to deal with tools. How do you how do you use a, a drill or a, or a power tool when you're floating weightless? And they have to figure out how to brace themselves so they don't do the spinning instead of the, the bolt they're trying to undo and manipulate big objects. So he was doing that and he did it really, really well. And it was really amazing to watch him. Mm -hmm. Amazing to watch him. Uh, let's talk about the experiments he conducted in space though, because part of it was, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong here, it was about uh, long-term exposure to space, uh, if using his own body almost as an experiment. And that's what Canada specializes in. We're really good at space medicine, and a lot of Canadian experiments focus on not just what happens to the body, uh, but what happens to the visual system, how we get uh, disoriented in space, space sickness, which is something they don't want to have. It's sort of a, a variation on motion sickness. And uh, But what the, the body adapts to space and not in really healthy ways. Uh, the fluids shift up to the, the upper part of the body. We lose red blood cells, that's, uh, so you become anemic, and the bones deteriorate. There's a, a, an accelerated form of osteoporosis. It's like you, they get aged uh, in space. And so they have to take a lot of work to fight that, but they can't fight it totally. And, and uh, so that's all has to do with what we're going to do in the future. We're going to spend more time in space. So that's, he used his body as a guinea pig himself. There were tests done on him before he went into space. He did tests on himself up there. And as soon as he comes back, they're going to look at him again to see what kind of changes took place to see what the limits of, of humans are. I mean, how far can we go? Maybe we'll find that there's a limit to maybe we can't go beyond Mars. We don't know. we got to keep looking at that. Mm -hmm. uh, to the benefit of all humanity as we look to the future. Uh, Bob, thank you for this Appreciate the time. Okay, Michael. Pleasure talking to you. And that is Bob McDonald, the host of CBC Radio's Quirks and Quirks. He joins us today in Toronto. Now, we want to tell you that CBC News will be covering every moment of this re-entry at approximately 7.25 p.m. Eastern. St. Jacques' uh, Soyuz capsule will undock from the space station. Then at 9.55, the capsule will begin its de-orbit burn. It will fire its engines to push through the Earth's atmosphere in preparation for that descent that we heard from Bob. And our team will be covering at the landing site in Kazakhstan, where St. Jacques will touch down just before 11 p.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. local time, we have to tell you. And all of that we will bring for you live right here on CBC News Network. So stay with us for uh, throughout the day and certainly this evening.